At this time, sergeants, can you start your recordings? PC recording has started. Cloud is rolling. Sergeant Sadowski with your opening. Yep. Good morning and welcome to today's remote New York City Council vote of the Committee on Subcommittee on Zoning and Franchise. At this time, would all council members and council staff please turn on their video. To minimize disruption, please place electronic devices on vibrate or silent mode. Thank you, Chair Moya. We are ready to begin. Great, thank you. Good morning. Uh, I'm Council Member Francisco Moya, Chair of the Subcommittee on Zoning and Franchises. Uh, I am joined remotely today by Council Members Barry Gradenchek, uh, Council Members Reynoso, uh, Levin, Rivera, and it brings me great pleasure to uh, introduce and bring in, of course, two new members. Council Member Diana Ayala and Council Member Joe Borelli. Welcome to the committee. We're looking forward to doing some good things together. Uh, today, we will hold an additional public hearing for LU numbers 705 and 706 for the 1501, 1555, 60th Street rezoning. This proposal was previously heard on December 7th, where a full presentation for the applicant's representative was provided, and there was an opportunity for both verbal and written testimony from the public. Also on today's agenda are a number of votes, including the aforementioned 60th Street rezoning proposal and the 265 Front Street rezoning proposal, which was also heard by this subcommittee at our December 7th meeting. And proposed resolution 1445A submitted by the mayor pursuant to section 363 of the charter for the granting of franchises for the provision of telecommunication services and which was heard at our hearing of October 13th, 2020. Before we begin, I want to recognize the subcommittee council to review the remote meeting procedures. Thank you, Chair Moya. I am Arthur Ha, counsel to this subcommittee. Members of the public wishing to testify were asked to register for today's hearing. If you wish to testify and have not already registered, we ask that you please do so now by visiting the council's website at www.council.nyc.gov to sign up. Members of the public may view a live stream broadcast of this hearing at the New York City Council website. When called to testify, individuals appearing before the subcommittee will remain muted until recognized by the chair to speak. When the chair recognizes you, your microphone will be unmuted. Please take a moment to check and confirm that your device is unmuted before you begin speaking. Public testimony would be limited to two minutes per witness. If you have a written testimony you would like to submit, instead of appearing here before the subcommittee, you may email it to landusetestimony at council.nyc.gov. Please indicate the LU number and or sub, uh, project name in the subject line of your email. During the hearing, council members with questions should use the Zoom raise hand function. The raise hand button will appear at the bottom of your participant panel. Council members with questions will be announced in order as they raise their hands and then recognized by the chair to speak. Finally, there will be pauses over the course of this hearing for various technical reasons. And we ask that you please be patient as we work through any issues. Chair Moya will now continue with today's agenda items. Uh, thank you, Arthur. Um, I also see that we've been joined by Council Member Yeager. Uh, welcome. Uh, I now open the public hearing on LU numbers uh, 605 and 606 for the 1501-1555 60th Street rezoning proposal for a zoning map amendment and a zoning text amendment. I'll note again that at our December 7th meeting, we received a comprehensive presentation by the applicant's representative, so we do not anticipate hearing from him today. The 60th Street rezoning proposal relates to property in Council Member Yeager's district in Brooklyn. Uh, and now council, would you please confirm whether we have anyone wishing to testify on the 1501-1555 60th Street rezoning application? If there are any members of the public who wish to testify on LU numbers 705 and 706 for the 1501-1555 60th Street rezoning proposal, please press the raise hand button now. And the meeting will now briefly stand at ease while we check for members. Uh, Chair Moy, I see no members of the public who wish to testify on this item. Thank you. Uh, there being no members of the public who wish to testify on LU's number uh, 705 and 706 for the 1501-1555 60th Street rezoning proposal, 
the public hearing is now closed and now we will move to our votes. Today, we will vote to approve with modifications LU number 605 and 606 for the 1501-1555 Sixtieth Street rezoning relating, relating to property in Council Member Yeager's district in Brooklyn. The application was originally presented, uh, seeks a zoning map amendment to replace an existing M11 district with an R7A C24 district and a zoning text amendment to establish a mandatory inclusionary housing utilizing option one and two. These actions were intended to facilitate the development of three new buildings, two on the north side and one on the south side of 60th Street between 15th and 16th Avenues. The buildings on the north side of the street would each be seven stories with ground floor commercial and residential use above, including 23 and 39 units in each building, while the building on the south side of the street would be eight stories with ground floor commercial and 40 units on the upper floors. A modification will be to decrease the proposed rezoning area by excluding portions that front along 15th Avenue. Accordingly, we will also modify the proposed zoning text amendment so that the proposed MIH area is consistent with our modified uh, rezoning area. By implementing this rezoning with modifications, we will create new affordable housing through MIH that otherwise would not be able to be developed on these blocks. At the same time, we want to balance new growth while preserving the longstanding businesses on this corridor, protecting existing residents from displacement and not placing the burden of larger developments on the low density R5 districts that surround the rezoning area. Typic typical homes in the area are two to three stories detached and semi-detached buildings uh, on the mid blocks with some two to three story mixed use buildings on 15th Avenue. In contrast, the R7A district uh, allowed development up to 85 feet in height and up to a maximum FRA of uh, 4.6. Bulk rules, which are significantly more uh, permissive and higher in density than this prevalent uh, built character. The longstanding businesses on the block include two furniture companies, a convenience store, uh, auto repair businesses uh, within auto repair businesses with collectively and approximately 35 employees. The residents being carved out include eight buildings with 18 units in total, uh, which are not protected by rent regulation. Uh, despite the findings of the environmental assessment statement, we are not uh, persuaded that there will uh, not be an assemblage of the smaller lots, which are mostly two-story residential buildings with FRAs ranging from 0 0.59 to 0 0.78. Similarly, we are not persuaded that the new zoning would not act as an incentive for the larger furniture store on lot one to be redeveloped, given that the, the built FRA on that two-story site is 1.5 and the R7A would allow up to a 4.6 FRA. Um, through this, uh, though this is uh, not the intent, the significant upzoning might cause displacement of these active businesses and jobs, which are most important to maintain uh, in this time of economic stress due to the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as a small residence without the protections of rent regulations. Limiting the boundaries, the boundaries of this rezoning area to the three development sites and the inter intervening lots will strike a balance between encouraging new residential development with MIH and preserving the mixed use character of these blocks. Council Member Yeager is in support of this proposal as modified. Um, and now regarding the 265 Front Street rezoning proposal on today's agenda, I note that the council is in receipt of a written statement dated December 15th, 2020 from the applicant that the application has been withdrawn pursuant to council rule 11 uh, 0 0.60B LUs 707 and 708 for the 265 Front Street proposal are filed and remove them from our calendar. We will also vote to approve with modifications proposed resolutions number uh, 1445 uh, A, the Information Services Franchise Authorizing Resolution, and which has subsequently been amended. Uh, I want to note that this resolution is not the cable television authorizing resolution. Uh, it is for the provision of broadband internet uh, without uh, cable television services. Uh, this was submitted by the mayor to the council pursuant to charter section 363. Our approval would authorize the granting of non-exclusive franchises for the installation of cable, wire, and or optical fiber and associated equipment 
on and in the inalienable property of the city, including through pipes, conduits, and similar improvements uh, thereto, uh, to be used in providing one or more telecommunication services. The telecommunication services that such franchises would provide would be information services, as such term is defined in the federal law. The proposed authorizing resolution differs, differs from the prior information service authorizing resolution from 2013 in that among other changes, minimum criteria shall be used by DOIT to evaluate the RFP responses and franchises will be required to provide data to the city. The council's modification would require any information service franchise agreement to include terms requiring reporting in compliance with labor transparency regulations, encouraging the provision of affordable high-speed broadband services to residential and commercial customers, and requiring compliance with any federal, state, or local law requiring net neutrality. Uh, I now call for a vote to approve the modifications I have described, resolution 1445A, the information services franchise authorizing resolution and LU 705 and 706 and to file LU 707 and 708 to remove them from our calendar. Council, can you please call the roll? Chair Moya. I am all. Council member Levin. Permission to explain my vote? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, uh, I, I want to vote aye on all, but I just want to speak for a moment about um, the, the withdrawal of the 265 Front Street application in my district. Um, I think it's regrettable that um, that we were not able to um, reach a, um, a mutual accommodation between the community um, and the Department of City Planning. Um, I want to uh, thank the applicant um, for uh, being willing and reasonable and trying everything that they could um, to uh, meet the community's objectives in a zoning application. And so they expressed willingness to um, submit an, uh, an application that was contextual with the community, an R6B application. This is going from an manufacturing and one three to a residential. Um, they were willing to do an R6B. Um, the uh, community board supported that position. I supported that position. The na local neighborhood association supported that position. Um, the um, uh, uh, the borough president supported that position and um, and the applicant was willing to do that. And it's, it's regrettable that, um, that the city um, was not willing to, um, to accommodate that position. And so um, that is why we are where we are today. Uh, I just wanted to put that uh, on the record uh, so that, um, so that it's, so that it's uh, there and clear. Um, and um, you know, I certainly want to um, express my appreciation to to the applicant for their willingness to um, to try to get to a good good place on this. And uh, um, uh, and so, with that, I vote aye on all, and I uh, appreciate my, the consideration of of the chair. Thanks. Thank you, Steve. Council Member Reynoso. I vote aye on all. Council Member Gordenchik. Aye. Council Member Ayala. I vote aye on all. Council Member Rivera. Aye. Council Member Borelli. Uh, thank you very much. I vote aye on all. A vote of seven in the affirmative, no uh, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. The items are approved and referred to the full land use committee. Thank you. Uh, that concludes today's business. I would like to thank the members of the public, my colleagues, subcommittee council, uh, land use and other council staff, and the Sergeant at Arms for participating in today's meeting. Uh, this meeting is